Okay, folks, welcome back to part two of the QuickBooks tutorial on bank reconciling. Okay, so, uh, but onwards and upwards, we're going to um, go ahead and reconcile. So the thing you need to do is we're going to go back to our bank statement and just go line by line, one line at a time on the statement and reconcile. So my first transaction on the statement here is this check number 1013 48 for $48.90. Um, a lot of times you'd be safe just by pulling the check number and finding that in QuickBooks, but um, a lot of times just to be careful and make sure that everything's been entered right, um, I, I will check the, uh, the amount too. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here, check 1013 for $48.90. So that's that's correct, but what happens is if for some reason you had the wrong check number or you made a mistake when you originally entered the entered the data and let's say you typed in $49.80. Um that's not really going to be a big deal uh in our case today because as you'll see see here on this statement there's not a lot of transactions, so not really a big deal. But let me tell you, if you're dealing with a statement that has um, 50, 75, 100 transactions or more, um, I'd really encourage you to check the amount uh, as you're going through because if you don't do that, what will happen is you'll get to the end. Um, you'll get to the end of the statement and then you'll discover that, uh-oh, I'm off by $100 or $75 or whatever. And so now now you've got to go through and figure out you know where you made the mistake and it's almost like you have to do the entire thing all over again from scratch uh, so please heed this advice for your own sake and uh, just take take a little slower at the start and check your amounts so that you don't give yourself a big headache uh, at the end okay so um, getting back down off my soapbox again uh, Okay, so we're dealing with check number 1013 for 4890. That looks fine. Uh, so we found it here in QuickBooks, and what I'm going to do is click, and you'll see that makes a check next to this transaction. That means that, um, you know, I'm telling QuickBooks it's shown up on my latest statement, it's cleared, um, so let's clear it in QuickBooks too. Okay, so we're just going to do that same thing over and over again for each. Uh, each item on on this statement. So next, I've got this payment on August 14th for 114277. So I'm going to find that, um, and here it is. The amount checks out, so I'm going to click it and check it. And um, and just so you know, um, obviously the date it, the date on your statement very well may not match what um, the date in QuickBooks is for you uh, because, you know, if you, well, basically it's the time between when you made the check out to somebody and it's and the time that they deposited it. So um, obviously you can use the date as a frame of reference, but it's not a hard and fast rule. It might be, you know, and then of course you sometimes have people that wait weeks and weeks or months and months before they cash a check that you've sent out. Um, but anyway, staying on track here. Uh, next online we've got this deposit on 815 for 1423.75. So we're going to go find that. Here we are. Okay, so next on our statement is the um, charge on 815 for 4348. So I'll find that in QuickBooks. Here it is. And we'll check that off too. Okay. Next, back to the statement again. Um, we've got these two checks here uh, number 1012 and number 1031, both for 375. So I'm just going to get two for one here and knock both of them out. So here's the first one and here's the second one. Okay, and then 
Our last transaction was the good old bank service charge on 831 for five bucks. Back to QuickBooks, we find it and we check it off. Okay, so that is, as you can see, that's that's the entire bank statement. So if I go back to QuickBooks here, and if I look in the bottom right hand corner, um, this difference field right here is zero. That's a good thing. Because this difference, what this difference is, is um, the ending balance, this is the line that I typed in in that first reconcile window where I was telling QuickBooks what my statement ending balance was. Then this cleared balance here is um, the balance that QuickBook is QuickBooks is showing after I've checked off all these items. So the difference between those two amounts is zero, which is what we want it to be. That means that um, what we've done in QuickBooks matches up exactly with what is in um, with what is on the statement. Uh, and that's the goal of the reconcile. We want to get to the end of the statement and have this difference field be zero. Now, um, I didn't point it out to you, but if you want to, you can rewind the video and watch as I'm going along. Uh, you'll see that the difference field changes uh, as I go along. I'm actually I'll show you another feature of the reconcile window here. If you've made some mistakes or you just want to start over from scratch, you can hit this unmark all button and that unchecks everything. Um, and you'll see what happens down here is that we're now showing, QuickBooks is showing a difference of negative 566.40. So that's telling me that um, you know, there, there are definitely some things that I still need to check off or enter here in QuickBooks. And so watch, watch what we do. I'll just give you a couple examples here. Um, as I check things off, you'll see I, I check off this, this uh, payment and then the difference changes. Um, I'll click another one. And our, <clears throat> excuse me, our difference changes again. Um, so we had all of these checked, and you'll see the difference has changed some more. And once I've got all of the entries entered and checked off from our statement, you'll see the difference is zero, just like it was before. Um, and again, that's where we want it to be. Uh, so um, another tip here, if you uh, get to this point and you and you notice and, and you're sure that everything is right or, or you look in this bottom window and see oh my gosh I actually entered in the ending statement balance wrong at the start what you can do is click this modify button and that'll bring up that original window again and I can modify you know oops my ending balance actually was supposed to be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars or whatever it whatever it was and then you hit continue and it changes the amount down there um, we don't need to do that so I'm cancel here okay so that's a good stopping point why don't we stop here and move on to part three of the QuickBooks tutorial on bank reconciling